the greatest story ever told. <laughs> Presented by the Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company. <laughs> Presents Voyage to Rome, a drama based upon events set forth in the 27th chapter of the Acts of the Apostles. Events which are all part of the greatest life ever lived. <laughs> up from the coastline of the Holy Land and faces the great sea. This is the capital of Caesar in this part of the world and is in appearance almost as Rome itself. Here, all the notables of Judea and Galilee and Syria come to mingle with Roman nobility. And here to this city has come the Apostle Paul to teach the way of his Lord. But his teaching has brought him great danger. For he has been seized and imprisoned, and only the fact that he is a citizen of Rome has kept him from being tried by the authorities in Caesarea. So it has been decided that Paul shall be returned to Rome to stand trial there for his teaching. Now, on this day at the great wharf of Caesarea, a number of prisoners wait in chains to be placed aboard a vessel to start the long, difficult journey to Rome. Prisoners! You will stand in a straight line while the honored centurion Julius inspects you. That attention, I said. They're ready, sir. Good, Tercius. I thought I could pick him out just by looking at him. Which one is he? Which one? The one who claims special privilege because he is a citizen of Rome. Oh, that one. Here, sir. Well, no wonder I couldn't pick him out. Look at him. Just in such poor clothes. So you're the one, hmm? I am, sir. Paul of Tarsus, citizen of the Roman Empire. You do no credit to Rome, dressed like a poor man. And from what I hear you teach, of a strange God, I teach of my Lord, Jesus of Nazareth. And for your teaching, you will pay with your life. You know that, don't you? I know only that I must teach. I must pass on to those whom I meet the truth as I know it. Well, let me warn you now. There'll be no teaching on this voyage. My assignment is to take you to Rome, to deliver you to the authorities there. This I will do. But without trouble from you, do you understand? Centurion, you are an extremely anxious man. In some way you fear me, yet I have no hatred against you. How much better your life would be if you could trust and love your fellow man. That's the way it starts, sir. He always talks that way. Well, he won't start it with me. Watch the prisoners on board. Yes, sir. Prisoners! Ah. As for you, noble Paul, you'd best watch your ways, do you understand? Ah. <laughs> Precious, you say he insisted on seeing me. Yes, sir. Well, Paul, only a single day has gone by and you come to register a complaint. Well, no complaint, really, since Oh. Ah. There was only a single request that I had. I hear that at dawn this vessel arrives in Sidon, and there I have many friends. What are they? If you would grant me the liberty, I would like to visit them. For who knows that I will ever have the opportunity to see them again, the charge against me being so grave. A man with a grave charge against him might be fit to escape. Better to be a fugitive than dead, huh? I will not seek to escape. Ha-ha, <laughs> they never do. Please, sir. 
Have you no compassion? I'm a soldier. I'm not trained to have compassion. I'm not paid to be merciful. I'm not a centurion because I practice leniency. I am what I am because those in command trust me to do my duty, and I will do it. A pity? A man so resolute as you could be of great service in a worthy cause. And what does that mean? Would that you were so strong in the cause of righteousness. What a pity that you have never heard the teaching of love which my Lord pronounced on the mount. I don't know what you're talking about. Shall I take him back to the hole, sir? No, not yet. I'd like to hear this teaching. There can be no harm in it. I was not there when he taught these words. But I've heard them many times since from his disciples. And in my mind, I've even heard the way they must have sounded. So he said them. it has been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. But I say unto you, Love your enemy. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. And pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. He has pointed out to us. Would that all men follow those words. <laughs> I see you do not believe them. I do not. Too bad. But now, to my request, may I have the freedom to visit my friend? I told you. Now, wait. I, I think it might be arranged. Curses. When the boat reaches Sliden, you will allow this man his freedom. Sir. Do I hear right? Yes, sir. Now, prisoner, you'll return below deck. Yes, sir. And thank you. Sir, if you let him go for a day, you'll never see him again. And you know they regard him as a very important I know, man. Eh? He's not as free as he thinks. He'll be followed. Let him try to escape, and there'll be the provocation to kill him. He's a dangerous man. He really believes what he says. A piercing look in his eyes. Even while he talks so gently. I don't like that either. Nor do I. And to have such a man with us for the many months it will take to make this journey, I don't like that prospect. So he will go free for the day. And you will follow him. And take another soldier with you as a witness. We need strong proof against him, for he's a Roman citizen. Then at the first sign that he seeks to escape, you'll apprehend him and bring him back. Attempt to escape the just by executing him. We may be rid of him very soon. Well, Curses, don't stand there mumbling. Speak up. What happened? I don't. I, I don't know. I saw him one moment, and then the next moment he was gone. Gone. We well, had followed him closely. Had seen him go from house to house. People greeted him. He went inside. Always he came out. Always I followed him to the next place. Yet you're lost and you let him get away. I don't know how it happened. I, I don't. But you do know what this will mean to me. Think of what will happen when we reach Rome. They'll ask for this special prisoner and I'll not be able to produce him. Think of what will happen to me. <laughs> I should have you last for this. Oh, please, please, sir, please. Uh, oh, let me go by my throat. As you were. Yes, sir. Yes. Come in. You. You are surprised to see me, sir? You should not be. I gave you my word. But still you had the chance to escape. But that would mean that I value my life more highly than yours. More highly than the mission on which I go. That is not so. I would not put you in jeopardy by escaping. Nor would I turn from the work which awaits for you. Work. A trial awaits you there. And even death, yes. But before that, I will have the opportunity to teach of my Lord to Caesar himself. I would not seek to save my life and lose that chance. For you see, it is not really necessary to send torches after me. So we'll return to the hold of the ship. Yes, sir. 
knew that, that we followed him, that we lost him. And in spite of that, he returned. So he really believed what his Lord teaches. He even risked his life to save us, his enemies. But surely we would both have been sentenced to death for allowing him to escape. He's the strangest man I ever met. Well, this is the turn. We can set sail again. Give the order to the captain of the vessel. Yes, sir. <laughs> Captain, it is not my duty to instruct you in the sailing of the vessel, which is yours. You are both owner and captain. Oh, yet as centurion in command, you have soldiers and prisoners aboard this vessel. You are responsible for their safety. So I thought it best to consult you before we start the longest and possibly the most dangerous part of the voyage. From Crete here to the coast of Rome, there's no chance to sail along sheltered coastline. No, sir. Yet you believe we can make the journey in comparative safety. I think so. And I'm willing to abide by your decision. Sir, I do not wish to interrupt. You've already interrupted. What is it? The prisoner, Paul. We've had no trouble from him since we left Sidon. What's happened now? He insists that he must speak to you. Once we have set sail, I will have time to talk to him. But he claims he cannot wait. He must see you at once, before we lift anchor. Indeed. Bring him up here. He will have his chance to see me. But he'll regret it. Bring him to me at once. Yes, sir. That man... There'll never be an end of trouble with him. Yes, I've noticed him. He's a man with a religious air. For hours he will sit silently praying within himself. And around him there seems always to be an aura of some kind. The way the other prisoners respect him. The way... There he is. Well, Paul, you've insisted on seeing me. You've even insisted on having us put off the lifting of the anchor so we are soft. Doesn't it suit your pleasure to sail at the time, sir? I feel sure that the sail now is to cause danger and difficulty. Captain? The man doesn't know what he's talking about. I have a strong premonition. There will be storms and tempests. The ship will be in danger and all of us will be risking our lives. Nonsense, Captain. I beg you to put off the sailing. I tell you, I have a strong feeling about this. I have my cargo and my profits to think of. The ship cannot lie idle here in Crete. I say we say. And yet, Captain, it's still. Yes, sir. Who are you to proclaim yourself an expert over the winds and the tides? If the captain says it is safe to sail, we will do so. And another word out of you will bring you great punishment. I have done my part by warning you. I can do no more. Church is taking below. Yes, sir. Come along. Captain, we will sail. Then I will devise some punishment to fit this prisoner takes it upon himself to instruct us in our duty. So, Paul, you have taken it upon yourself to be responsible for the lives of all of us. You would instruct us in our duty. I meant only to do good. Did you? Oh, sir. Why do you treat me as your enemy when I would only be your friend? Well, I said I said to help you, not to hurt you. You know I don't trust you. That's because you've lived a lifetime among people who hate and distrust others. If only you would listen to the words of my master, if only... I've not called you to my cabin to discuss such things with you, but only to warn you. You risk your life by seeking to tell me or the captain of this vessel how things could be run... To give you a taste of how things will be unless you change your ways, I've decided that you will be beaten. If you have set your mind to it, I will not try to change it. For I believe that in spite of all this, you're a good man at heart. <laughs> and once you know the truth, you will change. If it will make you feel better to beat me, do so. See here, I want no tricks out of you. You have said I am to be beaten. I am ready. Come in. Sir. Sir, I've been trying to tell you. There's trouble. The prisoners. They've revolted? No, sir. This word is from the captain. We're heading into a storm, a very bad storm. Everyone must stand by. We will need every able-bodied man. A bad storm? Yes, sir. And I will go above and join the captain. And we'll see how things really look. And this one, what do you want done with him? I want him... 
I would want him returned to the hole where the other prisoners are. Thank you, sir. I will not forget this kindness. It's not time. There's no time for anything now but thinking of the danger we are in. Captain, is there anything we can do? Nothing more than we've done already. I've had all the tails gathered in. We can only put ourselves at the mercy of the storm and the wind and ride with it, hoping that the storm will be over soon. But you said that yesterday. This storm will never end, if one can judge by looking at the sky. It must come to an end sometime. We will come to an end before this storm does. Do something, Captain. Do something. Oh, Pat! With every wave, more water seeps into the hole. Already our decks are almost level with the sea itself. I know. I've been watching. There is a point at which the vessel becomes so heavy that we must lighten it. We may have arrived at that point now. What can you do? I will give the order. And I will need the help of your prisoners to carry it out. Whatever you command, they will do. Give the order. All hands! Make ready to hurl the cargo over the side. All hands! Still, it rages. And now the danger is even worse than before. What is there left to do, Captain? Nothing. The cargo is over the side. We have hurled all the spare tackle over the side. There's nothing left to do. And therein lies the danger. The crew knows how badly off we are. They know there is nothing left to do. From now on, we can expect the worst. Mutiny. Even outright killing. I have my band of soldiers. You need not fear. They will be of little use now, for they're as much afraid as my sailors. They'll be as desperate and as dangerous. Yes, you might as well be ready for panic at any moment now. And to think that all this could have been averted. We could not know there would be such a storm. He warned us. You mean the prisoner, Paul? Yes, he warned us. We would not listen. Now his worst prophecy is coming true. Well, it can't pass. Well, the trouble is beginning, I fear. Look there, forward on the deck. The sailors come caught us in the band. This is what I feared. I will try to quiet them. Men! Do not do anything rash or hasty. For together, we have a chance. Together, we may yet come out of this. Together, we'll die. You got us into this. And we mean to make you pay for it. Sailors, take heed. I warn you now. The Roman soldiers aboard this vessel, if you lift a hand against your captain or me, we'll all be killed. Did you hear that? We'll all be killed. Well, that's no threat now. We die anyway. Come on, men. Centurion, they do mean to kill us. See, they have weapons. Stand back, I warn you. Stand back. Your warnings won't save you now. My friends. My friends. Listen to me. My poor. My friends. Don't do anything now that you will regret. For if you think that you're all to die, you are mistaken. Oh, I, know. I, I give you my word that not a man will be lost. Turn back. Let there be no violence. Wait, men. How can you be so sure that we will all survive? Yes, yes. There should by me this night the angel of God, whose I am and whom I serve, saying, Fear not, Paul. You must be brought to four people. And lo, God has given you all them that fail with you. Therefore, my friends, do not be afraid. For I believe, God, that it shall be even as it was told. Did you hear that? Yes, but I don't believe him. The question is, will the men believe him? Listen up. How do we know that you tell us the truth? Yes, how do we know? Before we set sail, I foretold that there would be a great storm, and there was. Now I tell you... We will all be safe. It is the word of the God whom I heard. If I told you the truth before, believe that this is the truth now. It is the truth. He did foretell the storm. If you would be saved, believe him now. Believe him. What do you say, men? Will we believe him? Well, we'll wait a little while and see. 
But not even his God will be able to save him if he's lied to it. The storm has come. The men have come. But we're a long way from being safe, Centurion. Why do you say that's happened? Our rudder washed away, no tackle left. It was to work. We drift aimlessly. Sooner or later, we must reach land. Must we? You think we won't make it? I haven't said we wouldn't. But don't expect too much. Our faith is in the laps of the gods. Paul says we are in the hands of his God. Oh, Don't expect too much. That's all I have to say. There, Captain. You see. Yes, land is one thing reaching toward another. This may be a treacherous coastline. Let me have a look. Well, is it a familiar view? I'm afraid it is. Afraid? Why? If this is the place I think, then there is a great whirlpool close by. Two seas run together near here. We are not yet safely out of this. Stand by, and we will soon see. I told you, Centurion, I warned you. We're in the midst of it now. Is there nothing we can do? If we are lucky, we may drift through to calmer water, but if not, we will crash on the rocks. In any event, we had best get all hands on deck. All hands on deck! Release all prisoners! Every man stand by! We're the crowd on the rocks! Men, you will not serve any purpose by becoming panicky now. Hold fast! Every man will be saved if it is possible! Captain, what do we do now? The vessel is pinned here on this rock. He will be pounded to pieces by the swirling water. Yet we are close enough to land. Those who can swim can probably make it. Then I will give the order. We will abandon the ship and each man will strike out for himself. But, sir, we have a duty to perform first. What duty? The prisoners. We cannot let them escape. And they surely will if we let them abandon the ship. So they might. And then we go back to Rome and admit that. You know what is expected of us. We have no choice. We must kill them. Kill them? Well, what is it, sir? You, you, you seem squeamish. As though you've never killed a prisoner before. Come, give the order and have it done with. There's little time, precious. There will be no order. You can't let them escape. You wouldn't dare. Think of the consequences. This could mean execution for you, sir. I know that, but the prisoners will not be harmed. Why? Give me one good reason. That man... I could not lift a hand against him. For not only did he warn us against the storm, but he saved our lives. So he could prophesy that the storm would pass. And each thing happened as he said. Truly, his God has powers beyond any we know of. I could not shed the blood of that man. This man, Paul, whom you hate, whom you are going to punish? He still, I wish I'd never seen the man. I hope I shall never see him again. He heard my decision. The prisoners will be saved. If you're afraid to touch that one man, why let all the others go free? Because, because I have decided it will be that way. Yes, all the prisoners will be saved. Well, it's your decision and your life. I know that. Hear me, all you men, soldiers, sailors, prisoners, hear me. All prisoners will be unshackled. Then you go over the side. Each man who can swim will strike out for the shore. Men who cannot swim will take broken timbers from the vessel and try to float in the shore. Each man is on his own. Good luck. Well, Centurion, you better take off your armor to make yourself light enough to stay afloat. As for me, I go over the side now. Hello. Farewell, Captain. Sir, may I help you? Hey, Paul, you're still here. I thought I'd be rid of you once I gave the order to abandon the vessel. Let the others go first. I can wait. Now perhaps I can help you to unbuckle your armor. There's not too much time. The vessel will take care of soon. I can do this by myself. 
Mr. Mayor. May I at least thank you. You've saved many innocent lives this day, but it risks to your own. I've done what I thought best in my judgment. That is the most heartening thing of all, my friend. What do you mean by that? You are no longer a centurion, but a man with a free soul and free judgment of his own. You are not the man you were on the day we first met. Something fine and wonderful has happened to you. Nothing has happened to me. You do not know what it is as yet. But one day you will know. You have encountered him. And you will never be the same as you were. No, for his spirit has touched you. And you have learned to love your fellow men. I knew that you would. I knew it. You knew it, yes. As I knew all those other things would happen. So now, friend, into the water before this vessel cracks in two. And remember, we will meet again one day in his service. Yes. We will meet again. I know it. Thank you.